Did you know that there are over 100 different hotkeys that can be used in the node graph alone? In this video, we'll cover as many of those hotkeys as possible in the span of just a few minutes, hopefully catering to novice and experienced users. Starting off with this text node, let's talk about how we can use hotkeys to toggle on and off some of the node options without even having to open the node properties. Now for demo purposes, we'll open the node properties so we can see what's happening. So let's take a look at the node tab here. Most nodes will have a node tab. And at the bottom of the window, we can see some options that relate to this node. We can toggle these checkboxes on or off with hotkeys. To hide any input pipes into the node, press Alt-H. Alt-H. You'll see that turns on the checkbox for us. This hotkey is particularly useful to hide viewer inputs. So if I select my viewer, Alt-H, click off that, you'll see there's no longer that dashed or dotted line from the viewer to the node. If you want to cache the node so that it can be reread quickly, press Control B, Control B, and a yellow line will appear under the node to indicate caching is enabled. Of course, pressing D on the keyboard will disable the node, and put diagonal lines through the node indicating that it is disabled. If the node contains any animated values, this scaling was animated, and you want those to appear in the dope sheet regardless of whether the node properties panel is open, then tick on the dope sheet checkbox or press Alt D on the keyboard. If I close that out now, you'll see I still have that node represented in my dope sheet. If this is a node that you will revisit often, then bookmarking this node by pressing Control Shift B will add this node to the bookmark search menu. So when you press J in the node graph, you can recall that node. Finally, we have the option to postage stamp this node with the thumbnail view by pressing Alt P. Alt P. But note that adding the little thumbnail view does reduce script performance if there are a lot of thumbnail views being used throughout. So use them when necessary. A couple of other useful hotkeys relating to the node itself are while in the node graph with the node selected, pressing N will allow you to name the node. Make sure you have the node selected and then pressing Control Shift and C. This will allow us to change the color of the node. So that we have a little more to work with, we'll add a few more nodes to the tree here by pressing B, C, K, M, O, P, and T. It should be noted that if we hold down Shift while pressing B, C, K, M, O, P, or T, then each of these nodes will be added to a horizontal branch coming off of the previous node. Let's take a look at that. I'm holding Shift, E, C, K, M, O, P, T. So you can see how that built that out horizontally for us. Now let's select all the nodes with a hotkey. I'm making sure we have the last node selected in the tree. Press Control, Alt, A to select all of the connected nodes to this tree. With the nodes selected, let's create a group of these nodes. But rather than pressing Control, G to group them, let's press Control, Alt, Shift, and then G to create a group from these nodes. So we're right now looking inside that group node, but if we go back to the main node graph, we'll see we created a group based off all of the nodes we had selected. This is different than pressing Control G because this actually leaves the set of the nodes unnested while creating a new group based off of these nodes. So if we're working on a large script that was going to be distributed to other artists to help out on, then we'd want to consider using a live group workflow in which case we would select the nodes we want contained in the live group and press control L to quickly nest the selected nodes into a live group, control L. So should we ever need to unnest nodes from the group, then we could select the group node, press control, alt, and G to extract the nodes contained in the group. Now when it comes to duplicating nodes, maybe consider using an alternative method to control C for copying, Control-V for pasting. Try using Alt-C, which will duplicate the nodes. Alt-C. If we copy and paste a node, such as this transform node here, copy, paste, it will continue to paste copies of that node under the selected node that was copied. But what if we want to paste copies of the node that are only attached to the node above it? So let's select a node that we want to branch off of. Say this one right here, this rotopaint. Press Alt B. Alt 
B. You can see this will duplicate the selected node and start a separate branch. I can keep pressing Alt B. And you'll see that continues to branch off from the node that was right above it. If we've copied a node from elsewhere, but want to start another branch off of a selected node, so we'll copy this transform down here. We want to start a branch off of this node here. And we can press Control Shift and V, and that'll begin its branch off of that node there. This saves us the trouble of pasting the node, then having to connect the input pipe. From here, we can select the duplicates, which is these ones there, and press L to line them up in a row. Another alternative to copying and pasting would be to clone the node by pressing Alt K. Take this transform here, press Alt K. You see, we now have a clone of this node as indicated by the little C icon on the node and this little orange line connecting the two. Alt K functions as the combination of Control K and Control V. We can at any point make a clone node independent of other clones by selecting the node, pressing Alt Shift K to declone the selected node. So many hotkeys, so little time. We'll go over a few more before we end the video momentarily. Selecting the bottom of this tree here, using the up and down arrow keys, will step you through the nodes in the tree. If we hold down control and use the up or down arrow keys, then we'll move the selected node up or down in the tree. Pressing X on the keyboard will bring up command entry mode, which will allow us to recall older nodes that have been deprecated, such as the shuffle node. Type in shuffle and press OK. And we can see the old shuffle node with the grid layout comes into the script. We can also enter Python commands when we select the Python button in the command entry mode. So press X again, this time select Python. And enter a command like nuke.startPerformance timers with an open and close parentheses at the end there. And then press enter or OK. You'll see that performance timers has been initiated on each of the nodes in the script providing performance information about each node. Turn off the performance timers, open the command entry window, pressing X, then change start to stop, then press OK or enter on the keyboard. Alternatively, you can open a script editor panel and enter the same commands here, but this is just a little quicker if you don't already have the script editor visible. Moving on, pressing Q on the keyboard while in the node graph will not only show you the name of your script, but also the location of your script as well. This can be convenient if you need to copy and paste the file path in an email, and instead of opening a browser window to navigate to your script location, Q will quickly provide that information for you. And finally, last but not least, to learn more about the script we're working on, pressing Alt-I will provide us with script information, such as node count, channel count, channel usage, and whether the script is full res or proxy mode. Unfortunately, this video ran a little bit longer than expected, and we were only able to cover about 28 of the 100 or so different hotkeys available for the node graph. If you have a favorite hotkey that you'd like to use, then please feel free to share it with others in the comments below. A list of all available hotkeys can be found in the Nuke user guide. Be sure to check out our other workflow videos, and thank you for watching.